As a wildlife detective, I know all too well that sometimes you go out looking for one thing and you find something completely different. But I still couldn't believe my eyes when this creature ran towards me. There is currently, I believe, an edible dormouse on my, on my leg. <laughs> um, Today, we're on the lookout for something, mm. something, something unusual. Whether we'll find them or not is another matter. But I have suggested that uh, there is a prize for finding them. And I've said that I will pay 50 pence per one of these creatures that we find up to a maximum of five pounds so we'll see if that's an incentive or not i'm going to be completely honest with you this trip did not go to plan and yet i don't think i could have filmed what i did if i'd actually tried to and i still can't really believe it so I've been wanting to take a trip to the Chilterns to film this one for a while. And as our target species are quite slow moving, when my husband suggested it, I saw no harm in turning this into a family adventure. So we packed the kids into the car and drove off to Buckinghamshire. And to show you a creature that I think is really cool, the Roman snail. But unfortunately, we didn't find any, alive at least. So this is evidence at least, or the shell of what we're looking for, but it's empty. So hopefully, yes, I know, okay, it's full of dead snail. Would you like to see, it's full of dead snail. Can I see? Although we couldn't find any live snails, we did spot lots of their distinctive shells around. And this unfortunately very recently deceased individual. There's so much I want to tell you about these creatures, but I'm going to save it for another day. Hopefully I'll have more success in a future episode. You know, with actual live ones. Alex's impression of a kite. Let's go. There it goes. It's more, I think it's more of a. So, this is what happens when you give a two year old the GoPro. Let me know how the stabilization's doing. I'm going to guess probably not so well. It's a pretty big challenge for it. We discovered lots of awesome fungi while we were searching for gastropods. These were a few of my favourites. Something, what do we think could have been nibbling these? Snails or bunnies? Mm, I don't know about that. It looks like they're sort of teethy marks, doesn't it? And we also saw some interesting invertebrates too, including European hornets and this beautiful speckled wood butterfly. And in the botany department, I came across a species that I have wanted to see for a while. This is woodruff. It's a member of the bed straw family or Rubiaceae, and it's also an ancient woodland indicator species, which makes sense as these beech woods have been here for a very long time. But just as we we're about to give up our search altogether and head back to the car, something pretty crazy happened. I was lagging behind with my toddler when I saw my husband and my daughter had spotted something along the path ahead of us. I'd mistakenly assumed they'd found another cool fungus. But then when he mimed a shh at me, I thought again. A tiny animal, maybe? There is currently, I believe, an edible dormouse on my, on my leg. <laughs> um, Hello. No, apparently not. But this that is, is my brain. He's just climbed up my leg. I didn't expect that was going to happen. We were looking for snails. That is my... This incredibly cute little creature is a young Gliss Gliss known as edible or fat dormouse. 
I always feel like these are pretty harsh common names. And it's because the Romans like to fatten them up and eat them as a delicacy that they're called this. But the Romans aren't actually the reason they're here today. These cute little rodents were brought over to England by Walter Rothschild in 1902. Apparently, he brought six of them over to Hungary to join his menagerie at Tring Park in Hertfordshire, where he famously kept many exotic species, including emu, giant tortoises and kangaroos, as well as zebras, which he reportedly trained to pull a carriage. But the dormice didn't stay captive at Tring, and they have now multiplied. They're still mostly within a limited range of Tring, occupying woodlands around the Chilterns. Gliscus are usually mostly nocturnal, so I was a bit concerned that this little one was on the ground in the middle of the day. I wasn't sure if it might be injured, so I called a friend who has experience with this species for some advice. As they're considered an invasive or non-native species, it is illegal to distribute or release them into the wild. So if it was injured and I did rescue it, it would spend whatever was left of its life in captivity. After a brief call, I decided it was best to leave it be, by which time it had screwed up a nearby tree anyway. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my species list in the description and let me know if you spotted or heard anything I missed in the comments. I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a like and please subscribe to the channel if you can.